Welcome to Conversations with the Candidates, Election 2019, brought to you by iBerkshires.com in collaboration with the Northern Berkshire Community Television. Over the next five episodes, we will meet the 14 candidates running for City Council in North Adams. The top nine vote-getters will be seated as the new City Council, and so we hope to bring you some insight into who the candidates are. Now, here are the candidates. And with us this episode is Brian Sapienza, Marie T. Harpin, and Peter Aleskowitz. All three are running for city council. And to start off, we're gonna let you introduce yourselves to the audience, and Brian, we're gonna start with you. Okay, I'm Brian Sapienza. I'm, uh, this is my second time running for city council. I tried in uh, 2017, and uh, I hope this time is a charm. Uh, I'm a native of North Adams, homeowner. Um, I've been here all my life, pretty much. I did live a little bit of time outside the area. Um, however, it, uh, I'm back home and I'm here to stay and I hope to uh, be able to accomplish some good, great things for the city. We are in the f moving forward and uh, I hope to uh, continue moving forward to that. Uh, I am a parts manager at KM Toyota in North Adams, and I've been there for about 13 years. So I'm employed by a local business. I, my father was a local businessman, uh, Mr. Cobbler on Eagle Street, and uh, I hope to uh, be your counselor, and uh, I hope to uh, have some great things happen for the city while during my tenure. Thank you. And Marie, and you're running for your second term. Second term, term that's okay. correct. But just so people don't know you, tell them who you are. Okay, so I am Marie T. Harpin, and um, so this is my second term that I'm running for. Um, I've, I've been on the council for two years now, and in that two years, um, I have been on the finance committee, I've been on the public safety committee, and also the Public Service Committee. Um, I did chair the Finance Committee this year. Um, I'm also involved in Green NA, it's called, which is Green North Adams. I, I just um, started being a member of this program, which is um, trying to get sustainability in, in North Adams um, with recycling and um, composting and, and things to do with sustainability. Um, I'm also on the Domestic Violence Task Force um, through the DA's office, which I think is something that has certainly impacted North Adams in particular when I um, first initially started um, on the city council there. It was within days that, that, that there was a murder in North Adams, so it really did um, bring attention to the issue, especially with the councilors that are sitting um, on the councilor, council um, currently. So um, those are some of the things that I've done. Um, I do, as far as my education, I graduated from North Adams State at the time, it is now MCLA, um, and with my bachelor's degree in um, accounting and uh, marketing. I also got my MBA from MCLA um, in 2014. I have worked in accounting field um, for over 25 years in different industries. I work for KB Toys, I work for a finance company, and I currently work for an energy company um, doing renewable energy. So um, I'm very involved in finance and I'm very involved in renewable energy as well um, and domestic violence. Okay. And Pete. Hello, my name is Peter Lasquitz. Seeking a seat on the council. I've been a lifelong resident of North Adams. 25 years on the road really kept me away from the city that I like. And now being a business owner in the city it kind of affords me the time to give a little more. I try to stay active in the community as much as I can. And as after we saw that four counselors weren't going to come back, but after the initial time of the papers came out, Paul Hopkins luckily decided he was going to stay with us, thankfully. Thank you, Paul. But it gave an opportunity for some new fresh faces to come on the council. I mean, at one time I considered pulling back out because there were some really strong candidates that would have lended more diversity to our council, but they had since dropped out, so I continue to push forward. 
So be, and you, you own uh, uh, Desperados on Eagle Street, yes, right? Yes, I do. You, you st about two years you've owned it now? Two years in about three weeks wow. from now. Uh, so what do, you, what do you feel that you can bring to, uh, as a council? How, what do you see your role on the council being should you be elected? Should I be elected? I think as being a business owner, I mean, working with budget constraints, I would actually wouldn't mind getting a seat on on the uh, finance committee and I mean Marie did a fantastic job I don't think anybody could have touched what mm -hmm. she had done and I wouldn't mind being a part of that yeah. and my number one thing is I would like to get on the public safety committee because I think the times come we can't keep dragging our feet anymore I mean our local fire department and police department they're working in pretty terrible building I mean it, right. it should be yeah. condemned I think it should be gone and find a way to relocate them. Okay. I mean, they don't deserve the conditions that they work in. Well, that's something we'll definitely come back to and talk about. So, Marie, obviously you were on the Finance Committee and you definitely played hardball. I was there for some of those meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if you were reelected, so we have an unusual, we have one person who said one term and two people trying to get on. Right. So if you're reelected, what, what do you, now that you've had two years under your belt, what, what do you right. hope to do more of? What, what do you, how do you see your role now? As a um, I, I would like to do more renewable energy. Yeah. Um, I think that that's something that I didn't really get a chance to do in my first term is uh, um, kind of get some awareness out there of green energy and sustainability within the community. So I would like to work on that. Um, and uh, the finance committee, um, you know, if I'm on that again, I, I certainly would, would welcome that. And um, some of the issues, I, I, I think the number one issue I think is important right now is um, some infrastructure um, funding. So um, that would be something I would, I would advocate for. Okay. And Brian, you, you, right now you're on the Public Arts Commission. So you, yes. you've, got, been, you've been doing that. You go to all the meetings. You rarely miss a meeting, a uh, city council meeting. So what would you say, what, if you got elected, what, was, what do you see yourself as doing? Is there something in particular you're interested to bring forward to the council um, that you want to get more involved in? I think uh, my, my primary interest would be uh, public safety and uh, finance committee. Mm -hmm. uh, those would be my two main interests, uh, make sure the city's uh, budget is viable and that we have enough, uh, we have enough funds to keep the city running. Um, public safety is a large interest of mine, both police and fire departments. Uh, I've always had an interest in public safety being that my brother is a uh, paramedic in southeastern Arizona and uh, the the work that these guys do is absolutely incredible. I mean, there's nothing more comforting when you have an issue than a highly trained paramedic at your side telling you everything's going to be okay. And, uh, and these guys need, um, need the best equipment. They need the best facilities to work out of. Um, as far as fire department, I would like to see a new public safety building at some point in the future, whether we have to go through federal or state grants to get it. I see that we have William, the town of Williamstown has a new facility, both police and fire, or they're going to be getting well, a new fire station. They're hoping to get their new fire station. Hopefully soon, <laughs> yes. So those would be my two primary interests. But I think the main thing of being a city councilman is to listen to the people. That's what we're here for. We're here to represent the people, the citizens of the city of North Adams. Listen to what they have to say. Get our ear to the street and be out there and listen okay. to and what they... What, what are you hearing? I mean, you're, you've been out campaigning. What are you hearing? I hear things about traffic. Traffic. Traffic is probably the number one complaint. Uh, local, the, the traffic around town for the small streets, narrow streets, mm -hmm. people drive too fast. Uh, running of stop signs, running of red lights. Uh, I think there's a lot of aggressive drivers that need to be slowed down. Um, we have a lot of problems in small neighborhoods where we have, we're unfortunately uh, one of the streets where it's a shortcut between two major places and we see traffic going through there. A lot of traffic, you get a lot of volume and then you get people that decide that's the quickest way to go and they you know, 25 mile an hour zone, and they're going 40 yeah, miles yeah. an hour. And, and, the, and the council actually, 
approved adoption of a state law to bring it down to 20 miles, right? In certain right. roads where I, they could. I think, yeah, the, yeah, that's within certain areas, areas in right. neighborhoods yeah. that, you yeah. know, have high congestion or high traffic, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, the Traffic Commission is working on that right now yeah. um, and figuring out exactly what areas of the city that we can um, apply that. So what are you hearing from constituents? What did, what did they want the council to um, do? What am I hearing? Um, I recently did a little door knocking down in the Greylock area. Yeah. And um, one of the issues down there that I constantly hear and is, I don't know if you've been down there and you walk even by Greylock School, are the sidewalks. Yeah. Um, the sidewalks are really that whole neighborhood. You know, you go down Barbour Street and Green and um, Fusher and, and, you know, there are sidewalks on both sides of the streets. And um, they're just really old. And, you know, some of them are, they're falling apart. There's like holes. Um, and, you know, it's easy. There's cracks and bumps. And, you know, it's just really easy to fall. There's some elderly people in that area. So, right. um, that is an issue that I hear down there quite often. Um, and, and so I am really trying to bring that to the forefront and um, try to get some um, infrastructure completed in, in that area. Right. That would be somewhere that I know really needs it. Right. Even on our own Main Street in North Adams, yeah. the sidewalks are in pretty rough shape. Yeah. They take a lot of heavy traffic. They take a lot of they, traffic. We've done that that long ago, too. Well, we weren't, in, in, but I mean, in the terms use of, of like a decade, but you know. Yeah. The use of salt and chemicals yeah. uh, remove the ice, takes its toll on the concrete. And yeah. I mean, I'll, I eat at Empire every morning pretty much and have coffee. I mean, the holes in the sidewalks are, some of them are pretty large. I mean, I would hate to see somebody twist an ankle or break an ankle or someone that's elderly, even. I mean, they take so much longer to heal right. and uh, the damage could be worse. So what are you hearing from people? I mean, you I, we run a restaurant, you spend a lot of time, I know, downtown in the local watering right. holes, you know, for oh, coffee, the coffee. Over the, coffee the last, shops. Yeah. <laughs> coffee shops. Yeah. Over the last few days, the, the biggest thing we're hearing is the condition of a lot of the roads. Okay. I mean, I know Chapter mm -hmm. 90 funds come in and they really, they don't go very far. No, I mean, they you don't. can get $90,000 and you can probably do Eagle Street, and the money well, you doesn't. Even, you yeah, you're, do you're right. You probably can't even do Eagle Street. <laughs> Eagle Street's a big street. It's a big street. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my side of Eagle Street. Yeah, but your I mean, side. The right. fun, the two funds. parking spots in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was another thing about losing the two parking spots in front of Desperados. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I totally embrace yeah. the parklet that's there. I mean, that's that's an awesome attraction yeah. to the city. But the, like I said, the biggest thing was the potholes and right. what's going on and of recent I've actually met with Christina Daniel from the NAACP and it sounds like the we really do have a problem with racism here. Yeah. I spent three th three hours with her Thursday and after the incident that happened at Brayton Hill a few yeah. months ago when the feces were spread on a woman's door and the constant racial slurs thrown at her Apparently, after sitting with her the other day, she spends a lot of time with his family. It's still happening really? it's still on a happening. daily basis. So I know that Brayton Hill doesn't fall under the housing authority. It's privately owned, but somebody has to meet with the management and trying to address this because there's no reason why a woman with young children should, should feel that like she yeah. should sit inside her doors and her young children are seeing this every day. I mean, it's pretty sad. What, what do you think the council, I mean, I'll ask it to all three of you. I mean, obviously, we, we have infrastructure issues. Obviously, we know that. Right. We, have, we have social issues. We've mm -hmm. had a lot mm -hmm. of social issues, and, and racism is one of those. We, right. We're supposed to, we're an open and affirming community. We, you know, we passed a, um, resolution. a, a resolution on that right. a, a couple of years ago. But, but saying it and making it happen are two different things, True. right? So, so what, do you, what do you see as the council's role in being able to, to deal with these kinds of issues? In the with the racism, I actually talked with Christina about maybe forming a, a committee of just local residents who live yeah. this. And maybe we could meet weekly, monthly, wherever, yeah. in a different location every week. And that way the people who are affected by this, can, they can tell their stories. Right. And people can actually see that it's happening. And I mean, we'll, we'll never understand what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's something that definitely, definitely needs to be addressed. Well, some of the same things we're going with, with the um, domestic violence. 
Right. You know, exactly. it's sort of like some a terrible thing had to happen to sort of wake everybody up to, you know, there, there's an issue here and we need to deal with it. And one of those has been the task force that's been going on. So are you seeing any, any um, positive benefits from that? I mean, are you feeling that it's, it's helping in the community? I, I think the task force is just really coming together and getting some training at this point. Yeah. Um, they do have a book club that's out this month. I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but I might oh, as well mention go it. Ahead. Um, they do have a book called No Visible Bruises, What You Don't Know About Domestic Violence Will Kill You. Um, and so it's a book that we're asking um, everyone to read uh, that's interested in learning about domestic violence. And um, we're going to have a community conversation about it. Um, so it's a book that really gives some real life stories, and it's also a book that kind of gives um, a different perspective from um, different avenues of domestic mm -hmm. violence as far as like the victim, the survivor, the perpetrator, um, law enforcement. So it's, it's really a great book. And so we have it available at the library. They had some copies, but I think they were all taken and there will be a book club there. Um, and also Men Initiating Change is gonna be having a book right. club also. I believe that's November 6th. So. so it's really about raising awareness in the community and letting people understand, like you, like Pete said, you know, getting people to talk about the issues and, and learning what you can do to change it. So I know Brian, you want to weigh in here? Or, yeah, I mean, of course. I um, mean, as a counselor, it's hard. I mean, one of the ideas it is, is that it's, you, it's, you, it's a very difficult decision. Yeah. You don't know how you're going to handle it until you're faced with a decision. Right. Um, I certainly wouldn't mind a group of people sitting down and talking, talking to one another discussing the issues and trying to find out a possible solution, what they feel that we as counselors could do to help try to uh, get, you know, make, get a resolution. I mean, the, the incident at Brayton Hill was just absolutely disgusting. I mean, and that was, that's not called for. I mean, in a small community like this, we only have 13,000 people. We all have to get along with each yeah. other. You know, we see each other every day. We're always, you know, we, we, shop at the same grocery stores and I mean everybody goes to Walmart you know, you know you see everybody you know at Walmart at one point in time you know so we, we're all the same the small community and by just sitting down and talking with all the uh, people that are involved and even people that are not involved and you have a lot of you have a lot of hatred in any community but I think that if you can get these people together and sit them down at a table a diverse group um, and get them to talk to one another, get them to know each other, I think that would be a, yeah. go a long ways as far as being able to uh, relieve some of the tensions so, so in the what, So what I'm, what I'm hearing is that one of the roles of a counselor can be to be the face, uh, you'd be the face of the government in, in initiating supportive actions. I mean, there's obviously there's not, there's not a lot you can do. I mean, you can, you can right. make an ordinance, but uh, you, know, right. Uh, right. you know. We could act as facilitators. We don't we, have to right. make ordinances. We can act as facilitators. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I think, yeah, just being the face of the community as right. well and you know, um, putting your best foot forward and being positive on issues that you know, the community um, needs to bring awareness about, um, right. you know, like racism and domestic violence and, and just listening to people, you know, um, being approachable. And, and listening having, is and listening. definitely the yeah. key. I mean, we were yeah. given two ears for a reason. There you go. So let's go to the other big issue that you brought up, which is infrastructure. I mean, roads, I mean, we, there, there was an infrastructure plan, $20 million capital plan. That is aged at this point. It's probably mm -hmm. not 20 million. It's certainly has gone up since then. Right. Um, so in, in thinking about that, how, it, it takes money. It takes you know, money. How, how does the city get the money to do this? You know, should we be setting more priorities? Should this be something? Should, do we need to relook at this again? I mean, I'll, I'll go to um, Marie since you, you're, okay. you're chairman of the finance committee, <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, you know, it starts with writing it down yeah. and making a plan. Yeah. And, um, you know, it might not be, some of these things might not be something that we can afford mm -hmm. to do right away, but we can at least have a plan for it down the road because, like you said, I think, you know, the one, the plan that we had in the past is really kind of expired and we've done yeah. some of this stuff already. Right. So. Um, I just think it's time to sit down and kind of take inventory of what we need 
and and see what we need in order to be able to get there. Right. Um, so um, we did take a uh, million dollars off our debt last year. So mm -hmm. you know there could, there could be some room in there to right. um, you know get some debt and and try to maybe repair some roads or sidewalks. Right. Or, which is which is it's going to yes. have to be debt. Yeah, obviously, it's, yeah, it's just, yeah. just there's no way you can get around it. There was the wastewater to. treatment plant, I believe, that finally came off the books after mm -hmm. twenty something mm -hmm. years, and right. then one of the Drury High School came off and Brayton came off, so exactly. there is a little room. And obviously, this is a, it's a legislative action. Uh, you know, the executive would be would be dealing with this, but um, you see, the council should have a voice in this. I mean, we have a, you have a public service committee. We have right? a public service committee and a finance committee. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think there should be a lot of discussion around it, mm -hmm. and and. Um, I'm, I'm sure the mayor is, is thinking about it already and planning some meetings. So um, I, I personally think it will be something that will, you know, come to the attention next year um, through the administration. Brian, would you be supportive of borrowing for capital projects well, like that? As in our personal finances, debt is inevitable. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is the day and age where debt, uh, you're always going to have some type of debt. Uh, it's you know, and from what I understand and from what I've been told, the local network of streets is about 72 miles. And I, I've, right. from what I understand, is about a million dollars a mile to refurbish these streets. Yes, so you, you, simple math, you got $72 million in upgrades for local streets to do all the local, mm -hmm. uh, local roads. And uh, if we have to go in debt, the... Mm -hmm primary thing when you go into debt is try to find the best deal on financing that you can. Mm -hmm. If we can get grants, if we can get federal aid or state aid to do these, that would be the way to go. Um, but if you have a situation, uh, for instance, Quincy Street mm -hmm. is, is terrible. I mean, there are potholes that would small, swallow a small animal, yeah. you know, <laughs> for, for lack of a better term. But you, you've got... Right. You know, we, we tried riding a bicycle on that street one night, and, you know, it was like you had to dodge the potholes. Mm -hmm. And there's other streets in town that are just as bad. Um, and I think that's what we need to do. We also need to look at our water infrastructure. And if we could get, when we we're replacing and when we we're redoing these roads, if we could get the water pipes replaced as well get in and replace the water pipes, you know, you, especially now with winter coming uh, just around the corner, we're going to see a lot of water breaks like we did last year. We already had one. That had yes, we've already had one like this year. Like almost 36 yeah. hours, they were out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been it's an, there's been quite a few, yeah. yeah. It's an old system. It is. is. Very the problem with system. cities, you have old, it was all brand spanking new when they put it in. Everybody was like, this <laughs> is great. And then they just left it underneath the ground. We still have the networks, <laughs> yeah. uh, clay pipes underground. And yeah. Hmm. We watched Cowan and his group all winter long, yeah. you know, 10 feet underground in sub-zero temperatures yeah. addressing water main breaks. And we really know that it's bad because here we are in more clement weather and the in water the main breaks are yes. happening even more. We just had one right, actually right here at the end of this building. Right. Last it was, week. Right. yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, and you brought up the, the five, obviously the public safety building, which we're putting a roof, you're putting a roof on it. And, and actually had to, had to plead and appeal with the state to be able to put a roof on it because the state's saying this building is no good. But, right, right. You know, it hasn't been no good in, for years. I remember right. even as a kid walking downstairs in the fire department with blue tarps on the ceiling, diverting water that was coming into the building. I mean, that water eventually makes mold, and that's a pretty unhealthy environment right. for our local heroes to be working in. I think we've been dragging our feet too long. It's time to ask Homeland Security, the state, for anything that we can do yeah. to find some kind of grant money to get this accomplished. I mean, Williamstown just had it done start to finish in two years. I mean, they had a benefactor in Williams College giving them 400000 but yeah. we, don't, we don't have a Williams College. But right. that's something that we have to stop kicking around. So we, would you push for that on the council? I actually that? would. Yeah. I mean, these guys are the guys who, our lives are in their hands every day. Mm -hmm. So I believe that they should be given the facility to work out of, and sometimes it seems like they don't have the tools that are needed, you know, that, to keep us safe. Okay. And I'm gonna ask a question, they didn't ask the other ones, but because we have two people running, 
Um, and Marie's been there in the year, so you've got a little experience, but what is the council not doing that they think they should be doing? You've watched it, Brian's They are the council, the I mean, Brian, same thing. Yeah. I mean, Brian's at every meeting. I try to yeah. make them, and if I can't, I do watch it on television. I mean, they're a str it's a strong council. I mean, what they're doing, everything that they're supposed to be doing. I mean, I know they, yeah. every one of them faces heavy criticism. Yeah. Even Brian and I, in January, we're sitting there, it's going to be the same thing. We'll be the, the Facebook stories of the day every day, but. Right, <laughs> right. You, you're going to make decisions every day mm -hmm. that people aren't going to like, but you're, everything you're doing, you're doing it for the betterment of the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want a safe environment for everybody that lives here. But what, what aren't they doing that you think they should I don't do? think they're, an, I don't actually have a complaint. I, I don't have a complaint about the council. I think they're doing a decent job, an excellent job. One of my complaints is that possibly, how do I want to put it, uh, should be more communication between the committees and the boards be, and the general council. I know the general government committee does help to bridge that gap, but I think there needs to be a little bit more communication. I have seen gaps in communication from time to time. And one of the things I would like to stress is making sure that the council and the boards and the commissions have an open line of communication with one another, that what happens in the board meetings eventually ends up at the council meeting. And have a, a seamless, or not seamless, but a, a, you know, a fairly direct line of communication to get from one, yeah. one group to another. I think it's important as a counselor, I would want to know what's going on with the boards. Even if I'm not a member, I can always sit in on the meetings, but I think that we need a better line of communication and I think people need to talk to one another and work as a team. Well, I know one of the things they were talking about with the new website that they announced mm -hmm. was, Having a, like a document dump where, where meeting minutes could be posted so everybody yes, can see Yes, that would be very nice. <laughs> yes. Which would be helpful. Yes, that would yeah. be, that would would be, be great. Very, very helpful. Eliminate all the paper that we're going that, through. Yes. So. Right, you want to talk about recycling and all that. Yes. You know, so, so Marie, what, how about you? What, what isn't the council doing that you want them to see? Um, I guess I, I, I yeah. would go off of what Brian was saying. I, I agree a little bit. We um, kind of get a little lax about our liaison and committee yeah. reports. And, and I think there are some times, there are times that we do go to these meetings, but we don't report on mm -hmm. them. So maybe we could do that a little more often. And um, I just think like even with the finance committee, we maybe have a meeting every other month or a, a meeting every month. We generally have meetings every week in April right, and May, right, you know, so that's, season, that's when so, we're going right, through the budget right. season. But, you know, in the off budget season, in the summer and in the fall and in winter, we probably, we, I, would, I would like to have at least like a bi-monthly meeting just to get an update of what's going on from the administration and Right. Um, get some reporting and review it and, and, and that type of thing. Right, because so much is done in the executive office right. that it doesn't, you know, you find out about it six months later. I mean, they, they don't have to tell you, but it's, it's nice if you know it when you're looking at the budget, right? It's <laughs> yeah, not, yes. you know, exactly. not necessarily just ignoring you, but just doing their job and, you know, right, to exactly. be able to find out. I mean, I know there was a lot of talk at one of the recent city council meetings about, you know, more communication with the executive branch. Yes. They like to see more of that too. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, I would just, you know, just a, a little more information. It, yeah. it actually makes our job easier yeah. in the end if you're if you know what's what's happening as the years going through and progressing instead of asking questions at during budget season. Right. Um, and then them going through and making all sorts of different reports because you have all sorts of different questions. You know, right. if you spread it out throughout the year and, and you know what's going on, it just, you get your answers a lot okay. quicker and people are more informed, I okay. think. So what I'm hearing from this group is uh, more activity around social services, social justice maybe, and, and you know, considering domestic violence and racism more work on the infrastructure, finding ways to deal with that, mm -hmm. better communication for everybody. So there's something we've got, uh, eight minutes, I guess, oh, we've still got some time. So is there something I didn't bring up that you want to talk about? There was one more point when I okay. started 
with the racism thing. As okay. being a business owner on Eagle Street and the park and the parklet are out front. I live upstairs from the restaurant. And yeah. I consider that my backyard. And I, I mean, I sit out there all the time. I do notice that we do have a deep problem with mental health. Yes. I mean, I sit out there constantly and I talk to people all day long. And I know that we have the Marine Center, NBCC, but it seems like we need, we have a need for more clinicians to be here to, to help some mm -hmm. of these people out. I mean, me as a, a regular citizen sitting down and talking may help a little bit because, you know, the people that you're talking to, they actually have someone to talk to. And, you might have that good feeling, but I'm not, I mean, I'm not a licensed clinician. Right, or, right. But I can lend my heart and my ear, and but I, I believe that that's something that needs to be addressed. Okay. Marie? Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think there's some... Or is there something else that you want to talk about? You don't necessarily have to respond to him. You can no, I, I would like to would stay, like. stay yeah. on this topic okay. because I think okay. it's important. Um, I think that... Um, you know, we, we do need some more clinicians and we do need some, some help with some mental health issues and we also need some um, more assets as far as like drug addiction yeah. and, and yeah, some beds so here for, right. for people that, that need help and, and yeah. when they want to go to recovery, the recovery is available for them. So, you know, I think those types of things are, are issues that we really need to address. I think they're already being addressed um, and we just need to keep plugging away at them. Okay. Brian? I agree with uh, Pete on the uh, mental health issue. We have, a, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a lot of citizens in the area that are affected with some type of mental health issues or, or, or another and we just tend to push these people aside for the most part. You know, we think, well, oh, look at that guy, you know, or something like that, but I think that uh, we need to listen to these people. They all have stories. They all have the reasons where they are, why they are. Um, you know, if we can, you know, like uh, mm. like Marie made the uh, point, you know, more clinicians to help these people through life. I mean, you you may not cure these people, but you at least help them through life. The opioid crisis. That's that's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. Um, you know, we try to be there as, as supportive. We've we've seen a lot of people that we all know. We've all know we've known somebody that has died due to overdoses, and uh, you know, just in the last couple of years, I know at least three or four people, and I could probably give you the names of several people that I know or know of yeah. that uh, it's, it's have been taking, affected by yeah, it. Yes. And it's it's definitely taking a toll on it public is, it's safety taking too. An awful if toll. Anybody who listens yes. to the scanner, yeah. Yeah. yes, it's every day, every day, <laughs> yeah. every day, oh, definitely, it, yeah. not just in North Adams, mm -hmm. Adams, yes. Williamstown, Clark. I mean, we're we're hearing it all over, and yeah. it, it is it's obviously everywhere. an issue that it has to, I, I don't know how the council addresses something like that, but right. it's certainly, it, it's something you can't ignore. No. It's even no. gotten yes. to the point, no. I mean, you see, so this happened so many times in the course of the day. I mean, we even took their proactive approach at the restaurant where I'll have, I have Narcan at the restaurant. Really? Cause you just, I mean, hopefully I never have to use it, but it's available if the time does occur. Wow. That's difficult that, when you have to have a, yeah. 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 All right, we're running down on time, so I'm going to let you all. Uh, who wants to go first and tell me why people should vote for you for city council? Marie, go first. Okay. Your luck. Um, so my name is Marie Harpin, like I said earlier, and this is my um, second term that I'm running, and I ask for your vote. Um, I feel as though I have worked hard um, on the council. I've um, you know, worked really hard on the finance committee, and everything that I do um, on the council and, and making decisions that I think are beneficial to the whole community and really doing my homework when I get in there and asking questions. So um, I feel as though I work hard, I listen to people, and um, I would ask for your vote to continue what I'm doing on the council for the next two years. Thanks. Okay. Brian, why should, we vote? why should people vote for you? Well, um, I feel that I have a lot to offer uh, to the council. Uh, I didn't mention earlier, but I, uh, I have a Bachelor of Science of Business mm -hmm. in, from MCLA and a uh, Associate of Science degree from uh, Berkshire Community College. I, I think that uh, 
one of the things I want to stress to people is that my dedication of going to the council meetings to learn how the council operates, to learn how government functions occur, um, and it's a desire to be involved. I wanted to get involved uh, two years ago in 2017. Uh, it, was, it was a desire, and I've always been interested in city government, city politics, and I like the direction that North Adams is going. I think we're moving in a forward direction, and I would like to be part of that growth because this is my hometown, mm -hmm. and as far as I can tell at this point, I will be here probably for the rest of my life, and to be able to create a foundation of a great place to work and live I think that will benefit all of us, not only myself as I get older and uh, look to retire in several years, but uh, for others that are following the same path, not only for just people of my age, but young families that are moving here or want to stay here. Um, it really disturbs me when I see a young person saying, I got to leave, I can't be in this place. Why can't you be here? And I think we need to get rid of a lot of the stigma of being and staying in North Adams. Okay, and Pete, how about you? Why should, why should people vote for you? Hi, I'm Pete again, and as a lifelong resident of North Adams, like I said, I truly love North Adams, and I've always wanted to be at the level I'm at, I am at with being active in the community and I said, as in my trucking career, it really restricted me from doing everything. And I found as the more and more active I get, I thoroughly enjoy it. I meet different people every single day. I listen to stories. Same thing as Brian said, you hear from the kids who, when they graduate from high school or college, they, they bail. They, there's nothing here that, that in, that's, that's going to keep them here. I mean, even we have a uh, technical school in town. and. You see some of the contractors are itching for their plumbers and their electricians and it sounds like a lot of the kids are just continuing on to college and still leaving the area and i left the area once and i learned as i was gone for i was gone for very briefly because it hit me pretty much right away how much i miss the city i mean this is where i was born and raised and i love it so i think the willingness to listen to everybody, because that's one thing I always do. I mean, it sounds like more and more people that you talk to, it's not that their voices are silenced. It seems like they're sometimes looked over. Hmm. So that's the one good quality that I have is I'm a good listener, and I would like to continue on doing what I'm doing. I mean, if I don't get a seat, I'll still be active and do everything I possibly can. But I would like to be part of the team that helps guide the city, and I would very much appreciate your vote. Okay. And I thank you all. All right, thank you for being with us. Thank and I you. Want to thank, Tammy. I want to thank NBC TV for uh, working with us on these episodes and stay tuned for the next one. Mm -hmm.